We're on the homeward run. So you're wearing a frock today. I'm going to wear a frock tomorrow. I've thought about that. It's going to be so hot that we need a frock tomorrow, some of us. Beautiful. Love a frock. Okay. Please sit. Oh. <laughs> Cross your legs, please, in the Eastern style. Put your right hand out in front with your arm extended and your thumb towards the floor with your palm towards the wall to your right. Okay, put your left hand on top and interlace your fingers, please. Lightly. Do not grip hard. <laughs> It will not help you to grip hard. Okay, so lightly, lightly, and start turning your arm. Sorry to demonstrate. I'm not really demonstrating, but just turn your hands towards your chin, towards your nose, and back again. And just feel how easy is this? Soften, soften those beautiful hands. Soften them. Soften them, turn towards your chin. And then as you're coming, start taking your left elbow through the gap in front of your right elbow. So you're taking your left elbow through. No, start again. Which hand was it? The right. Left hand over the top. Okay, so you've got your right hand, your left hand on top, you're turning quietly and you're taking your left elbow through the gap. And you're just exploring this as a possibility and then you take it out again and you work out where, how is it that you can move your chest, your sternum, your head. What is it that you need to mobilise? But just remember, certainly in the first instant, if you're gripping like crazy, not a great idea. Allow your fingers to slide within each other. Keep them soft. Keep your breathing easy. And you're just finding a way to take that elbow through and you can lift your elbows a little bit, turn your upper chest a little bit, turn your head a little bit. How is it that you can mobilize your upper thoracic spine? What do you do when you get a bit stuck? Hold your breath and panic. Not a good idea. Wiggle a bit. Ease yourself around it. But don't wiggle where you know how to wiggle because guess what? You need to learn to wiggle where you've never thought of wiggling before. <laughs> so find your sternum, find your upper ribs. Lie on your back and have a rest. So the reason I was invited here this week is because I've got a reputation as an awareness through movement teacher. And so I'm supposed to rev you all up and inspire you 
to get onto the street corners and start teaching awareness through movement. <laughs> All right? So, and I tell you, it's such a joy. It is such a joy to be a teacher of, a, of awareness through movement. You learn so much. Never mind your clients, never mind the students in the class. I learn so much. Now, if I'm learning, they're probably learning. And it really teaches you what this method is about. Those lessons are, are totally the stand-up thing that Feldenkrais invented. They are his genius. As Susan Hillier says, pure gold. They inform our functional integration practice and they inform us. They're all different and they're all exciting. So really, I just implore you to give it a go. Give it a go. Put up. And the thing is, don't wait around until you've got what you consider is the number of people for a class. It'll never happen. The other thing to consider is that if you choose a time, half the people who ring you up who hear about you won't be able to come at that time. So you need to really think long and hard about offering more than one class a week. You know, maybe I'm pushing it if I say you should offer four classes a week, but, you know, give it a go on two classes a week. And, you know, of course it's difficult to begin with. Everything's difficult to begin with. But if you can just organise yourself to start teaching, you'll realise how rewarding it is. And what an extraordinary experience you're giving yourself as well as other people. Just while we're on it, <laughs> the other thing to remember is that you don't listen to your clients, except, of course, you know, sometimes. But, <laughs> but when they say, oh, I don't like sitting lessons, I don't like lessons on the stomach, I don't like standing lessons, you just ignore all that because this work is really about being in the world. And in the end, we don't conduct life lying on our back. As much as we'd like to, we don't. We're out in the world doing, we're on our feet, we're sitting, and we need to give lessons in all those positions. Otherwise, you're selling the method short. So with that to begin, well, that's, that's the beginning of the Awareness Through Movement chat. Please, roll, um, no, no, sorry, stay on, your, stay on your back for the moment. See, I'm succumbing to the pressure from all of you. <laughs> Please slide your legs up one at a time. Put your right hand out in front of you, turning your thumb downwards. Put your left hand on top. Interlace your fingers very lightly. Turn your hands, turn your hands, and take your knuckles around to the right, putting them on the floor to the right. And then may, maybe sliding your knuckles around the floor, over the top of your head and around to the left. Breathing. 
what do you need to do in your upper torso. So you're just taking your knuckles around from side to side. Gently, quietly. Oh, I trod on something. What was that? Oh, gently. So, and you're allowed to breathe while you're doing this. It's all fine to breathe. How can you mobilize your upper chest? How can you move your sternum? Feeling your ribs, soften your jaw, soften your tongue in your mouth. Quietly. What happens through your pelvis maybe, through your feet? It's not, not to emphasize what's happening through your feet and your pelvis. But just to remember that they're part of you and part of this story of sliding your hands around over the top of your head. Can you touch your shoulder on one side and then touch your shoulder on the other side? The top of your shoulder, that is. Oh, I can see why you're all doing it so easily. Okay, let you let it go and put your arms to your side. Slide your legs up again, one at a time. Put your right hand again out in front with your thumb turned downwards. Put your left hand over. Turn your hands, please. And take your left elbow through the gap. And now take your uh, hands from side to side, from one shoulder to the other, keeping that constraint of your left elbow through the gap in front of your right elbow. Just as well, I had my eyes open, wasn't it? It's a very different story, this. If possible, keep that left elbow through. <laughs> and move around from side to side in a quiet sort of way. What do you need to do in your upper chest? Now, of course, if this is a bit tricky, you can, of course, go over the top of your head. You can go across your forehead. And although your pelvis and your feet can be involved, it's not really about rolling side to side. It's about differentiating the movement of your arms, your upper chest, your sternum. It's about breathing. It's about exploring. What is it that you need to do? Let that go. Let your arms go long and take a rest.
please roll to your side and sit. Change the way you cross your legs. Put the other leg in front. Put your left hand out in front with your thumb down and your right arm over the top. Loosely interlace your fingers. Turn your hands towards yourself. And try to take your right elbow through the gap in front of your left elbow. Just play with this idea for a moment. Explore possibilities. Explore where you feel is a good place for you to do it. What do you need to do in your back? What do you need to do in your chest? Feel there are all sorts of things you can do in your upper ribs and your sternum. You can change where your head is. And of course, your jaw is soft. Your tongue is soft in your mouth. Go slowly, please, slowly, softly, loosen your fingers, find a way of taking those elbows towards each other. And then if you've got your right elbow through the gap, start taking your hands towards your right shoulder, around towards your head, over the top of your head maybe, to your left shoulder. Just feel how can you explore this part of you. Feel that you can breathe. Make it soft and light. When you've got your hands near your right shoulder, is there a way to lift your elbows so that your right elbow goes towards the ceiling? And back again. And you can go around under your chin with your hands and to your left shoulder. And which elbow goes towards the ceiling when you're taking your hands towards your left shoulder? Keeping your elbow through the gap. Lie on your back and take a rest. Sense the way you've been 
supported by the floor now. How much of you has found the floor? How wide are you across at the level of your armpits and shoulders? Across your back, just above your waist, just below your waist. And of course, the width of you across the back of your pelvis. And what's the shape that the back of your head is making on the floor? And spend a moment to sense the volume of your breath to feel, please don't do anything special. Just find where is your breath? Where does your attention go immediately with your breath? Can you feel your upper ribs involved in your breathing? Underneath your collarbones, your clavicles, along the sides of you. Low in your pelvis. Breathing is about using as much of you as you is possible in a quiet way. Please take your left arm forwards now. Your right hand over the top. Wrong way, sorry. Right hand forwards, left hand over the top. Turn your hands, please. You can slide your legs up if you wish, if it's more comfortable. Turn your hands, take your left elbow through the gap in front of your right elbow. And start taking your knuckles, keeping that elbow through. Take your knuckles towards the floor. Which side's easier for you? It'll be different for each person. Some of you will have your knuckles close to your ear. Others will have them a bit further away. Keeping your elbow through that gap. Is there a way of sliding around the floor in the direction of the top of your head to your other shoulder? Please don't do it just by rolling. Of course, your pelvis can be involved, but also find a way maybe of pushing through one foot and then pushing through a little bit another foot. And again, this isn't the prime mover. We're really looking for movement in your chest, in your sternum, with your breathing, opening your shoulders, softening the group of your hands, just keeping that connection with your hands connecting to each other. If you've got your legs up, try with your legs down. If you've got your legs down, try with your legs up. Just to feel there's a, a different possibility somewhere. How much side bending do you do?
you're looking for a, looking for a way, finding a way with this movement. Let your arms go long and take a rest. How is this floor supporting you now? Please roll to your side and sit. Cross your legs. Arrange your arms in your easier configuration. So just work that out to begin with your easier configuration, which, and you can just play around a little bit and work out. So I'm not going to confuse you or myself with talking about right and left. You just work out which is your easier way. And take your elbow through the gap. Soften your fingers and start taking your hands towards your forehead, up over the top of your head, towards the back of your head. And is there a way of taking your head through the gap that you've made with your forearms? Keeping your elbows arranged and back again, gently. So you can soften your fingers, just have your fingertips touching. And I won't say you're only cheating yourself. If you let them go for a moment, and take your hands behind your head. But I will say you're cheating yourself if you let your elbows become dis something disconnected. <laughs> Keep those elbows connected. You can loosen as you go over and behind. And touch your fingers again behind your head, behind your neck. Taking your head through the gap. And leaving your fingers touching behind. Just lift your elbows a little bit in front and circle a little bit and feel that you can move your head. And where are you circling from? So you, so stop that with your elbows and just move your head and your upper chest a little bit. Just quietly and change direction. Breathing quietly, 
softly. And take your hands again back over the, up the back of your head and over the top of your head. And lie on your back and have a rest. So this is a great lesson to teach to the public because everybody improves. And as you all know, it's not about the end, it's not about the goal, it's about what we learn on the way. It's the process. And the important thing with teaching ATM is to make everyone in the room feel that they're a great success. <laughs> Not just a success, a great success. And the other extraordinary thing about teaching awareness through movement is that I, uh, once in Sydney, uh, when I lived in Sydney, I started a multiple sclerosis class. And I taught the same class to that group of people as I did to the general public. Now, funny thing about that, but on the floor and shifting their weight, the people who had the misfortune to have multiple sclerosis were in fact better at it than the people who were Joe Public or Josephine Public. And so then I thought, well, this is a waste of time. Let's just throw them all in together. And so what I guess what I'm saying is, the other important thing to remember is if people say, oh, I can't lie on my right side or I can't do this or I can't do that, there's always a way that you can help them find to explore and to look after themselves. And as you know, it's our belief that we can't do things that stops us. So I guess what I'm saying is don't be alarmed by the different capabilities or perceived capabilities of people in your class. Don't feel you have to pander to the lowest, to the person who feels they can do the least. You encourage them and you help them just do what they can because that's what it's about, having a go. And if you don't have a go, You'll never be able to do anything. <laughs> Julie Peck calls me have a go mayo. So just <laughs> anyway, just to know that. Okay. Now, this time, roll to your side and sit. And arrange your arms in the opposite way. And let's see if you've learned something from the other side. Let's see if you knew what you were doing previously. So thread your elbow through. This is your less favorite side. And then start playing around and taking your hands over the top of your head 
and finding a way to take your head through the gap of those forearms gently. And you know it's all okay to just have fingertip as you go through, to separate a little bit as you go through, to come back again, and just to play with the edge of your ability. That's what you're doing. You're playing with the edge of your ability. And to play with the edge of your ability doesn't mean holding your breath, doesn't mean tightening your jaw. Soft eyes and the ability to move in your upper torso, in your chest. Remember that idea that your sternum can move relative to your spine at the back. quite a tricky idea, but just find it gently. And remember that you can keep your, you can separate your hands as they go over your head and then put them back together again. And then do some of those funny little head movements, upper chest movements. How many ways can you move your head with this constriction. How many directions of movement can you find? Can you feel the connection of your neck to your upper thoracic? And you can take, okay, give it a rest, lie on your back and take a rest. Feel your contact to the floor. Please now slide your legs up one at a time. Please put your arms long along the floor above your head. Have your feet in a position where you can 
They can support your weight and you can slowly peel your pelvis and spine from the floor. So slowly find the position of your feet and then slowly peel your pelvis and spine from the floor. And as you continue to peel, lifting, feel that your elbows can come closer to the floor for those who haven't got them touching. Find a way through lifting your spine and your pelvis to have your arms contacting the floor. You can bend your elbows a little bit and then slowly lower from the top of your spine first, slowly lowering sequentially and finding a way to keep your arms in that position on the floor. So you can bend your elbows a little bit, but your aim, and as you do this, feel that your armpits can open a little bit. So quietly, just do this a couple of times, just slowly peeling up, and then peeling down from the top of your spine first. And feeling the lengthening. Just let your arms just a little bit open. And then slowly go down. Slowly down. If you feel that your elbows are lifting as you lower, then you can go up again. And again, you just play with that edge of your ability of lowering your spine from the top and keeping your arms in contact with the floor. As you lift your pelvis, of course, your belly goes forwards. And you do this slowly, slowly. And you're finding that edge of your ability. Feel that your breathing is uninterrupted. And slowly let your arms come down. And feel and your legs long and feel your support on the floor. Support from the floor, I should say. Check in with your breath, the volume of your breath, the softness of your breath. How easy is it to spread your attention? From the top of your shoulders to the base of your pelvis. the width of you through that cylinder and the depth of you front and back.
Can you feel tiny movements on either of your ribs on either side of your sternum? with your breath. And slowly now, roll to your side and sit and stand. Feel your support from the floor. Just check in with your breathing in standing. And the way you support it from your pelvis and by your pelvis and spine. And just move your head around on top of your spine a bit and feel, is there a little bit of ease, softness? It's not necessarily to look anywhere, but just to feel that your head can sit on top of your spine softly, easily. You're free to move it in many different directions, many different planes of movement. And go for a walk and feel how that is. How long are your arms? How long are your fingers? Where are your shoulders? Hey, nowhere. Take a break. We're allowed to have a break, just a short break. 